All right, that's going to do it for the first half. The Kings lead open gym at the Golden One Center, 65 to 37 in a minute. Jerry Reynolds will be joining us here on the Halftime Show. Happy to have you here. Ryan in Sacktown taking you here through the first half. The Kings, uh, they brought the energy to a degree. They're running their stuff. You can't be mad at that. You're looking at them hoping they don't get any injuries, and you're also hoping that they can extend this lead a little bit in the third quarter. I know it's big right now, but you want to get it extended to where the starters do not have to play any minutes down the stretch. As promised, for game 82 at halftime, we bring in our good friend, Jerry Reynolds. I don't think he took a game off this year. No, well, I've, sometimes I've felt like I should have. But that's <laughs> like a lot of fans, you know, but uh, yeah, this, well, obviously this is, uh, you know, this is one of those things, like you said, I mean, they, you know, need to maybe play the guys a few minutes at the start of the half and then, uh, you know, rest them. And that's that. I mean, this is basically playing a G, G League team. Uh, yeah. Pretty, I mean, the T-Wolves with all their best players are one of the worst teams in the league. And this is guys that don't who haven't played. So Kings are doing what they need to do though. I mean, they're blowing them out and that's what you should do. Exactly. Exactly. Jerry, the concern with the offensive rebounds, is that a product of the Blazers literally game plan, just being shooting threes or are the Kings not boxing out? Well, it's more a case of, yeah, they're, them just shooting long threes and, yeah. and being just bad shooters that the ball comes off at funny angles. Yeah. <laughs> And and all, I mean, so so that, that's, I mean, I don't think there's anything to be concerned about there. Yeah, I don't particularly think so either. It made me think of, Jerry, did you ever run the uh, drills where you put the bubble over the rim yeah. for rebounding? Oh, yeah. yeah well, or, or we <laughs> use uh, uh, smaller rims uh, smaller yeah. inside the same thing. And so, you know, which which actually is kind of misleading because the ball will always come off different. Uh, than it would on a miss, mm. you know. I mean, it's it's one of those drills that I did it, but I I don't know that it really is a very accurate. Just, uh, right, you right. Know, you're just hitting like, a spot on that. Yeah, you're hitting a spot that wouldn't normally hit, and it comes off at a different angle or or rate than it would if it hit the iron. You know, and totally. So, it's like the, it's like a lot of their miss threes are really front of the rim line drives. Well. Those are going to come off so fast, and and <laughs> if you're under the rim, and you know you're in danger almost. <laughs> yeah, you need a hard hat. <laughs> uh, Jerry, look, uh, we we've kind of hit on it. I said at the top, this is to me pretty much an open gym for the Kings. It's it's really like a practice session. So if you're Mike Brown, what is your strategy here in the second half, and what are you looking to do with the guys? I think you only thing you want right now is just to make sure the guy. Guys understand, keep the ball moving, you know, play defense, play hard, play together, and then uh, get them out. And uh, because there's nothing to prove here other than just go ahead and get to make sure you get the win. Right. And your, and your starters and key guys get some rest and uh, no injuries. That That's really it at this stage. I'm with you, Jerry, and a lot of action. It's a great Sunday, by the way. There, there's some good stuff going on at Augusta, if you're not aware oh, of it. Oh, yeah, I've been watching. Uh, you know, I'm a huge golf fan, and so I've, I've been switching back and forth, and I like the early start so I can really get focused on the Masters later. And, of course, yeah. all the good NBA games going. There's some very meaningful games. Exactly. Going. I, I was just going to get to that, Jerry. Right now, the Nuggets lead 61 to 51 over the Grizzlies with 202 left in the second quarter. The Suns, how about this, Jerry? 66 to 53 in Minnesota ha halftime over the Timberwolves. Yeah, very surprising there. Uh, you know, and of course, the game's not over. And we know in the NBA, you know, 12, 15 points uh, uh, can be erased in about three minutes. But, uh, yeah, the uh, I I fully expected the Timberwolves to win this game. You know, with of course with everything on the line for the Timberwolves, yes. Nuggets, and Thunder. So uh, that is a big shock. It is. Here's another one, Jer. Sixty to forty three. The Lakers right now up on the Pelicans in New Orleans, three thirteen in the second quarter. That's huge. 
that is huge, and that wasn't supposed to happen. So, no. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, the Lakers really, they have been playing extremely well. Of they late. have. You know, they and the Warriors both have probably been playing about as good as any team in the West, and I find that double depressing. <laughs> it, it, well, and I don't know, and I'm going to ask you this question because it came up on the pregame show. I, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that the Kings have the worst record in the last 10 games out of the group that's going to likely be in the play-in because, like you just said, the Lakers, Warriors, good records in the last 10. Yeah, the, the, I think the teams, you know, when you're going into the play-in as the Kings are, and, and you, I think you'd like to be going in there with a lot of momentum they're clearly not going to do that, and uh, but it's it's also true. It's a one game thing. So what you did in the previous game against a previous team doesn't or two, doesn't mean a whole lot. Right. Really. And uh, I was just uh, you know I I would just like the Kings' chances against personally against the Suns better than I would against the other two. And that may not be re, you know may not be true, but I just kind of like the matchups better. Yeah, I mean, I felt like the Kings had a great chance to to beat them every time. They haven't got it done, but but anyway. Yeah, no, uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, the other thing too is we haven't seen the Warriors in a while. Remember, the Kings played them three times early in the season. They have played a lot of close games this season. A lot of close games. The Kings up sixty-five to thirty-seven. At halftime, Jerry Reynolds joining us here on If You Don't Like That. Uh, you talked about you can't really get any momentum coming off of this. Is there anything you can do if you're the Kings and Mike Brown here? To I know you're going to tune up before the play-in, but anything you can do in the final 24 minutes? Well, if you've got anything you'd like to uh, to work on or, or experiment with, you know, now might be the time. In other words, that, and that's with your key guys. So, you, you know, yeah. if you're going to play your key guys four or five minutes here in the third, that might be a time to to maybe try a couple of things defensively and offensively if if you you think uh, you might want to use it in a play-in game. So other than that, I, I really don't know. I mean, it's just uh, – and, and that might be hard to do uh, against this team. I'm not sure what you'd learn. You yeah. Know? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, you say, "Oh boy, that worked well against the Portland Trailblazers G League team." Well, yeah, but you don't play <laughs> a G League team in the play in. <laughs> yeah, you're you're not going to see a G League team there, and I guess you know you don't want to put too much on film right now, Jerry. I mean, I guess a lot of it is already there, but you're not seeing much more from the Kings than hit the paint and spray the ball out. Yeah, I mean, they they are who they are. I mean, I think uh, teams in the league know that, and uh, obviously uh, they're going to they're going to do what they do uh, for them to win. Uh, they really need to make threes at a productive percentage. I think that's such a key, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, not turn the ball over. You know, they usually are very good assist turnover ratio. That's important. Make threes, uh, and I think the fact that they're a better defensive team than they were yes uh, that that's encouraging, uh, but. But to, but it's also true they you know I just don't think this team can make up totally for Malik Monk another guy who in close games can create his own shot uh, you know as Fox can and and really totally. this team really lacks enough you know that's that's a real weakness I think for the team they really need more guys who can create their own shots when defensive pressure and and the refs kind of swallow their whistles late in games like like they do. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's it's funny you say that because Davion Mitchell, he is becoming I, I've said now the Kings have two and a half distributors that are active on the roster right now. But Jerry, how important is his role? Because with the other guys out, Monk out, the defense really can center on Katie made this point during the game can center on Domas and Fox a lot more than they were in the past. Yeah, they, they, exactly. And and I think, you know, one thing that's that not saying it's, it's been good, but the Malik Monk injury has maybe established that both Keon Ellis and Davion Mitchell really do have a role in this yeah. league. I may not be exactly what they are now, who knows, but I mean, certainly Keon Ellis, you, you've really got to like a lot about what he does for a team. And I think his best role might be as a third guard on, on a, you know, if you really want to get, get better. And then, uh, but Davion, you know, the question was, can he shoot it? Well, you know, for a couple of months, he's shooting the heck out of it. 
and and he's a tough little buckaroo. And I always say with small guards in particular, you got to be patient, give him time. This is his third year, yeah. and uh, I think he's right on track to have a good career. Hey, you've said it all along, even when he was struggling a little bit, you've said he could be similar to a Kyle, Kyle Lowry and doesn't mean it happens here in Sacramento, but it could happen somewhere in the future. And both of those guys worked with Steph Curry's camp during the summer, the, the shooting. So you can see him in uh, De'Aaron Fox, it paying off. Speaking of the Warriors, the Warriors at halftime up 63 to 56 on the Jazz Clippers, 51 to 48 at halftime over the Rockets. The Celtics, they rolled over the Wizards, 132, 122. Hornets, 120, 110 over the Cavs. You got the Hawks, losers, huge. Jerry, you're, you're Indiana, your home Indiana State. Pacers put up 157 today. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, they just rolled. I mean, the uh, the Hawks. I, I I think that I don't think the game was important to them. I think they were locked in, but uh, that still is a bit surprising. But the you know yeah. the Pacers offense are as good as a team in the league. I mean, I I think it's, it's, since they got Pascal Siakam, you know they they really are can be a bit of a threat there because they've got uh, you know obviously Tyrese is awfully good, but they've got a really good, good, uh, talented offense and, uh, and a great bench. I mean, yeah. J.J. McConnell off the bench is, I mean, yes. he's better than two thirds of the starting point guards in this league. Yes. You know, he wants a starting role. He loved when he got to start here in Sacramento when they were in town. Um, are they, are the Pacers maybe that sneaky team out of the East? I mean, everybody's always has the heat in that category and maybe New York to a degree, but could they be that team? Well, they could be because they're so good offensively. I, I kind of think they're a, a year ahead of themselves, although I mean yeah. that's the reason they went to get Siakam. I, I think right. they felt that they weren't good enough as they were. But uh, if you had to make me bet, which I don't like to or wouldn't, but I'd, I'd, I'd take the Knicks or, or Heat over them in the okay. series. I just think they're built built different. You know, I mean, a little, a little tougher minded, but, uh, you know, I mean, and I've gotten point now where I I just don't bet against Jalen wouldn't bet against Jalen Brown yeah, Brock, you can. or Jimmy Butler. I mean, I think he, the certain guys you 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 just uh, better know they're going to be awful good when it counts. Amen, Jer. Amen. And uh, the final couple scores: the Bucks go down to the Magic, one thirteen to eighty eight. Watch that Giannis injury. He was lucky he escaped the Achilles, but the injury is not a heck of a lot better for this time of the season. Yeah, you know, and it's like say last year at this time they had the best record in the league. And yes, got injured during the playoffs, and yep. they brilliantly fired their coach, uh, so smart, yeah. who had uh, led them to a championship the year before and the best record. And and yeah. well, they've uh, that's worked out brilliantly. Had real it? good, right? Yeah, you lose your star in the first game of the playoffs, and you fire the coach. Well, uh, too, uh, I've it, said for I, I don't mind saying it, it's like Portland. You know, firing Terry Terry yes. Stotts a couple of years ago. I mean, hey, the truth was, which they know now, is they won more games than they should have. Uh, you know, is yeah, they weren't contenders to win the championship, but the truth is, with the talent base, they shouldn't have had the success that they had. And so, good move, Portland. Uh, how's that working out for you? Ooh, hot. Whoa, whoa. I, I mean, that's holy moly, Jim Bowley. Oh, hot take. <laughs> From Jerry. Yeah, that, that is Baki's daughter. She she gives us all hit you with it one more time. Holy moly, Jim Bowley. Oh, Baki's daughter. Well, you can't you can't beat that. You cannot. How do you how do you rate that holy moly Jim Bob bully? Is oh, that like that's a, up there pretty good, you know? I mean, I, I, I like the, the pitch, the, the voice pitch just makes it better. You know? Yeah, it it, yeah. it is pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that's that's better than I ever did. <laughs> I love it. Well, we are all going to be scoreboard watching here in the second half with the uh, NBA. Exciting times. Uh, really good stuff happening at the Masters as well. Don't want to ignore that. Scotty Scheffler minus eight through nine. Uh, Colin Morikawa minus seven through eight. Uh, Ober is it? It's Oberg or Ober? Oh, no, Oberg. Yeah, it's right. spelled. It, it's pronounced Oberg. I think. Yeah. 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 So Oberg but, minus seven, Max Homa, he's at minus six, Bryson minus three, and Tommy Fleetwood at minus three. So you're going to have a good finish there. Fern Lundquist, it's his last broadcast on the 16th hole. Yeah, Any good you. memories? 
Yeah, oh, yeah, he just does a marvelous job. Of course, he does. Jim Daps does too, you know. But and Mike Tirico, I like them all. I I'm a real golf fan. I don't play, but I love watching it. Uh, PGA, the LPGA, Champions Tour, all of it. But you know <laughs> golf. You were a caddy. Oh, oh I caddied. And I played some, but yeah. I, I wasn't mentally strong enough to continue to play. I was uh, I was one of those kind of like Terrell Hatton, you know. I, I <laughs> you know I couldn't I couldn't handle. Uh, uh, a bad play. Well, the reason I really quit playing golf uh, was my brother, younger brother Jeff, was real good. We started playing together, and he kept getting better, mm -hmm. and I did. And I and oh. I was better, and I was better than him in every sport. And I couldn't stand him being better, so I just quit playing. Hey, you were a nice guy. You gave him yeah. one, right? That's yeah, what a good brother well, yeah. does. So you, okay, Jeff, you can be you can be the best in this. You yeah, know. it was a gimme. It's a gimme. It's a gimme. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyways, Jerry Rattle, this is always a blast. Joining <laughs> us at the half. You guys know all the scenarios. We went through them vigorously on the pregame show, so I'm not going to go over them here again. Uh, Jerry, final score for the Kings and the Blazers. Yeah, hard to say. I'd, I'd say probably Kings 130, Blazers uh, 105, just, oh, okay. just because. Just because. Okay. I mean, because uh, who knows who's going to play? Uh, but so yeah. I have what I go with that. All right. Well, the third quarter is underway. We went long on the uh, halftime show. Thank you so much for being here, Jerry. <laughs> thanks for the time as always. And great, great season. It's been a pleasure having you on on the halftime. Show. Well, I, I've enjoyed it. I enjoyed spending time with you and, of course, the fans. I mean, it's a, a real trip. And, uh, you know, just, hey, the bottom line is they're in the play-in, so uh, if you can play some good basketball, you got a chance to make up for maybe a little bit of a disappointing end here. So uh, it's not over till it's over, as the great Yogi Berra would say. Nice. There it is. And and you can tell Miss Reynolds we got the check, by the way. Oh, wait. I wasn't supposed to tell you that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, just well, kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is Mrs. Reynolds. There's a lot of stuff she doesn't need to know. You know, I, you know that, that's kind of why we've been able to last 56 years together. <laughs> there you go. Balance. Hey, Jerry, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Take, take care, Rod. All right. And to the rest of you, have a great